Mika, Neil. 99 for just a Readiness Squadron. Hello and welcome back to today's video. As you can see from the title, I will be discussing my experience from ALS, which is other known as Airman Leadership School. I'm gonna be talking about what I learned, what we did, and what I got out of it graduating the course. So jumping right in, like I said, ALS is Airman Leadership School. So once you get promoted to E5, moving on up to Staff Sergeant rank, you are going to be going to this five to six week course where you learn all the leadership skills and they give you a lot of resources that you can use once you get airmen under you and even for yourself if you didn't know so i was the last virtual class on my base i'm stationed at nellis so we were the last class and the two things we used the most was zoom of course and canvas so what canvas is is a site where you can access your homework you can see the class schedules you can see the schedule for the whole entire course you can do, submit your homework on there just a really cool thing so getting started about two weeks before i got an email from airman leadership school and they were just saying hey to read a couple afis and get yourself familiarized with the main ones we use, such as dress and appearance, the core values, and then probably about a week before we started our class, we had a Zoom meeting where we just took role, and then they just kind of went over what to expect on the first day. And since it was virtual again, we had a quick briefing in the morning, and then we found out what our classes were, and then a couple hours later, we were released to our class with our instructors and our classmates. So the first day, well, I'm just gonna go by weeks. So the first week it was, especially the first day, it was a lot of introductions and how we did it, we kind of switched it up. It wasn't like, oh, I'm Sergeant Neil, blah, 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 blah. We were broken up into teams and then we had to introduce the other person. We asked a lot of questions about them and then we just presented it to the class easy peasy it was no time limit because a lot of your speeches are going to be timed and then we also just went deeper into the core values and what it meant to us and actually we had to give a background of kind of how the core values tied into what we believe in and basically your background just to get to know everybody a lot more and i want to say that one was timed and I was probably talking for a long time because once, like at first, everybody's nervous. Like you don't know anybody, so you don't want to go first. You don't want to talk first. But for me, once I get talking, just keep going. So we did learn about core values, like I said. We learned about diversity. And then we had to write a two to three page paper on the core values and how it affected us positively, negatively and then we turned that in. Second week, we talked a lot about communication and the Air Force mission. And we had to do a 30 minute brief this week, but we were broken up into teams. Everybody kind of got their own part and we had to at least, we, we couldn't pass, so we could not pass 30 minutes. If you pass 30 minutes, points get deducted. So it had to be less than 30 minutes. And the instructor wanted to have everybody have even speaking times. So one person couldn't do two minutes and then the rest do five, six, seven, eight. Had to be even like five, five, six, kind of like that. Just to give everybody a chance and just get that time to talk. Okay, for the second week, we talked a lot about career specialty. This week, we also had a briefing also just to give a five to seven minute speech about our career and how it tied into our, how our job tied into our squadron mission, our wing mission, and one of the five Air Force Corps missions. And like I said, that was a five to seven minute speech also. And for those who do not know, currently I am a unit deployment manager, but originally supply. We also got a really cool tour of the museum that had all the background of all the military people who won awards, who's been captured. It was really cool. One day I do want to go over there and go look at it in person. We learned about personal and professional 
development. Sorry if I'm looking down and looking at my camera because I actually have the class schedule still pulled up right now. And then we learned about behavioral analysis and influences that week. And that was the week of Juneteenth. So we did get that Friday off. So also the third week, we still touched on behavioral analysis, team dynamics, airmanship, and professionalship. And for this one, we got to pick a person in our military career who felt like embodied warrior ethos, the core values, how it pertained to the job, and how they basically, like why we chose them to be that person. I chose my supervisor. We also talked about critical thinking, problem solving technique. Although we did not have a briefing this time, there was a lot of talking and breaking into groups and we had to create slides and talk about teamwork and such on. So the fourth week was really interesting. We still talked on problem solving. We did emergent leadership issues, which is a big one in the military as we know. And we talked about negotiating. So our instructor told us about this show called Recreation Park. And it was basically, you're, let's just say you're given a scenario and it was kind of like dry humor type, but it was actually funny. So we kind of did something like that to where we had to pitch certain ideas to like this councilman and we just dressed up and it was probably the most fun I had in A-list because it was something different. Like you didn't have no script. You didn't have to memorize anything. You was basically just saying anything that came off on the top of your head. And then week five, we did our capstone exercise where we basically broke into groups and we were discussing how we would approach certain texts and emails as a supervisor and how would we respond. And then we presented it to the class and people gave feedback on what they thought. And we also had our graduation practice that day. And then the next day, which was our last day, we had our graduation and then feedback for our instructor and for our peers. So in between those classes and in those weeks, we had PT time where we went to do our personal PT. They had a lot of fitness people come on the screen. It was a little weird, but hey, I still got my workout in and we did workouts that way. We had a lot of briefings, legal came by, military warm source. We talked to a lot of chiefs and got their perspective of just their views on the military and how they handle certain situations. We did a really amazing bullet writing workshop. So last year I had to write my first EPR all by myself and I did not know what the heck I was doing. I'm thinking it sounded good and I had somebody else look over it and they were like, yikes. But from this class, I actually took notes. I took pictures. I wrote down so much stuff and I think it's really going to help me moving forward. I don't know if I'm going to have any airmen under me because like I said in plenty of other videos I might get out but it was really helpful. We basically had every single briefing from every single person that you know about. Like I said military one source, mental health, all types of people and it was just a lot of good information. Stuff that you didn't think that you can utilize especially airmen and family readiness centers. They do a lot and I thought they just like they just help you with taps and stuff like that. They do way more than that. And it's just really nice to know and get that information and share it to everybody else. So I want to say we had about three quizzes and two of them we just talked about in the class. It wasn't really graded. Like I said, we had a couple different briefings we had to present, a lot of slideshows. Like towards the end, we were just so over slideshows. We kind of got creative and just, like did drawing. Some people did freaking rap about military crap. It was so funny. We also got together and did a little potluck. It was kind of nice just seeing everybody not on the screen. So our typical schedule was from 0730. That was probably for the first week until like, I wanna say 1300, 1400. And then we kind of pushed it back to 08 and it would be the same times just depending on how fast we got through 
the class, a lot of talking, a lot of participation really does push the class forward when nobody's talking, everybody's just looking at each other. But it was only a couple times that we had that situation, not every single time. Towards the end or towards the, I think second or third week, you just get a lot more comfortable and you're more comfortable talking. For me, I said what I had to say at the moment and that was it. Like I know I could have said a lot more, but it's hard when you have 16 other people trying to talk at the same time and I'm not going to waste my breath and talk over somebody just to get my point across. When it's my time to talk, I'm going to talk when it's my time to talk and that's, that's it. So once everything goes back to normal, which is the next ALS class in person, you do have to get your blues ready. I did not have to wear blues. Thank you, Jesus. But you do have to have your blues ready. I know the regular time for ALS is 07.30 to 15.30. And we, when we went to the potluck and we went to see our ALS class we were going to be in, there's no AC. So I'm really thankful that we did. We were the last virtual class because everybody know how hot it is in Vegas. And then wearing your uniform, have to go up there in your blues. That's a no for me. So everybody says that you cannot learn how to be a leader. It comes with time and experience. Going into this, I had a pretty good grasp on a lot of things, but learning a lot of the resources that, you know, was really new to me, it kind of made me feel a lot more comfortable. So if a peer, subordinate, airman, whoever comes to me, I can kind of point them in the right direction. As far as problem solving and stuff like that, it was kind of nice to know different ways to approach situations because as they say, you cannot deal with everybody the same. Everybody is different, so you have to find different approaches to that. As being in that supervisor role, you have to listen to your airmen and then figure out the best way to help them and guide them into the right direction. So I feel like I've covered pretty much everything that basically happened in ALS. So tips, I would say participate as much as you can. They say basically talk every time you get a chance, every topic, just say a couple words, throw your point out there. Cool. They don't say just, oh, give one point and then you're done for the rest of the day. No, like if you guys want to get through the lessons, talk. That's all I can say. As far as speeches, best for you to kind of practice. I pra I wrote my speech down or we typed it up and then we would kind of read it in front of our classmates, kind of get their opinions on it. And then once the day came, we were a lot more prepared. So it's not like a lot of people were messing up. There were a lot of ums and like stuff like that, but it's natural. Everybody's gonna um when they are talking but it's just how much ums that you said. I don't think in any of my speeches I got too bad. Every time though, I was so nervous. Like I'm talking about like I'm sweating, I'm hot, like and it's virtual. So not you can't really see everybody on the screen. But like I said, once I start to talk and I'm comfortable talking about what I'm briefing about, I'm okay. And there was one time I actually went overtime and a lot of times I cut close to time, but that just comes down to, you know, minimizing your speech and just going at the really important things. So that is basically it for this video. The next video that I am going to do is how I made staff first time. It's gonna be super detailed because that BTZ one was not detailed at all. Now looking back at it, but I'm not redoing it. So this staff one, if you guys really want to make staff, I will be giving you all the tips and all the tricks. Please leave a comment if you have any additional questions on what happened during ALS. I feel like I touched on everything, but if not, please leave a comment below. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. And like I always say, until next time, guys, thanks.